to start off, we're going to come back to an early circuit, which is the NPN bipolar junction transistor, wired as a switch. And uh, so the LED is basically either on or off, depending on the input we give it. But instead of an on-off input, where we have a uh, voltage that uh, is either uh, cut off or is strong enough to turn the LED on fully, we have a trim pot. And you can see we got this small area here where it's not saturated like you see there and it's not cut off like you see there. It's in the active region. It's glowing a little bit. So we have a solution to that. And uh, first I'm going to come back. I had to raise the current up to uh, 40 milliamps of current because when I have this transistor going uh, full current, you can see it's almost 40 milliamps. This other circuitry here is producing about 25 milliamps of current even with the LED off that's one thing to be aware of. so all I'm going to do is yank this uh, trim pot and you can see if I yank the uh, transistor I was giving it a false signal the uh, current's not changing now there's no current going through any of that so in any case we're going to take the uh, trim pot here and put it over here so we'll uh, scoot it over a little bit it's getting a little crowded right there and uh, now I have the trim pot there and you can see how much current we got on the uh, power supply. I'll get the LED on just so we can look at how much current you can see we actually got less current demand while the LED is on for this circuit than when it is off. But uh, let's close in and take a look at it. So our signal is about the same here when it comes to the uh, trim pot setting the voltage that we are giving the base of the NPN bipolar junction transistor. So that's the first one. Now we have another one right there. We'll look at the schematics later on. So this is all the way over here. I can't turn it anymore. So it's on the far end of the resistive element going to the negative power supply and I'll turn it up. You'll see all of a sudden the uh, LED comes on at uh, some point right there. And uh, now I'll turn it down a little bit. We got a little bit of hysteresis where the uh, LED stays in whatever state we last put it in. So we go down slow. Now we're going up slow. It has to move a bit before it uh, goes from off to on and on to off. There's a middle area where it can be either on or off, whatever we last put it into. But uh, the main thing is it doesn't uh, slowly light up. It turns on completely. So that makes it a uh, Schmidt trigger right there. The sudden on and off and the hysteresis. So we'll uh, zoom in a little bit. We got two NPN bipolar junction transistor flat side for both of them is to the right so the emitter is at the bottom base is in the middle and a collector on top I got a 1000 ohm resistor coming from the uh, positive supply right there to the collector of uh, that transistor right there and you can see that uh, it also connects to that jumper which goes to the base of that transistor so really this transistor is naturally on so if I turn the trim pot down the transistor is on it has current going through the 220 ohm resistor and the 22 ohm resistor to uh, ground right there going through the transistor that's why there's more current when I turn the LED on then currents going through the 220 ohm resistor transistor is not conducting now going through the LED so long lead anode down there short lead the cathode up here going to ground and here is the schematic so I got this circuit from the book the art of electronics I modified it a bit and uh, but for the most part it's basically the same circuit and so that's one thing about this I'm not gonna be able to explain how this works perfectly well and uh, there's a lot of times you just know what a circuit fragment's gonna do and you'll know whether or not it works for your circuit you may not know exactly how it works and uh, so don't feel bad about that as long as you want to build that circuit build that circuit but in any case we have the uh, one kilo ohm resistor, as I said uh, before, that keeps this transistor on naturally right there. If that transistor's off, like it doesn't exist, then that one's on. It takes all the current through the 220 ohm resistor in this case to get a bright LED. You can use higher value. But in any case, whatever current gets through that resistor goes to ground pretty much uh, without any resistance. But we got this 22 uh, ohm resistor which means you're trying to build up a little resistance right there, a little voltage right there. So in any case, 
if we turn this transistor on, so I got to raise this up above 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volts, probably a little bit higher in this case, but in any case, somewhere around there, current will start flowing through the base 2 emitter. This transistor will start uh, conducting. And uh, so basically, that connects the base of that transistor to ground. We're using two N3904s on the breadboard there. And uh, any NPN bipolar junction transistor should work, but if it does not start with 2N, it may have a different pin layout. So in any case, that transistor's on, it connects that one to ground right there, turning this transistor off, and thus the LED will be on. Current will be flowing through it because that will be off as if it doesn't exist anymore. So that's really about it. As I said before, you uh, don't really need to understand this terribly well, but if uh, you have a NPN bipolar junction transistor you wanna use as a switch where it turns on and off completely and uh, with the bonus of the little hysteresis uh, in between where it turns on and off, you just basically have to copy this circuit adjust resistor values as needed and uh, I went with the lower value resistor than I saw in the other circuit. I added the LED and I added the trim pot. They had a higher value resistor there but since it's a 10 kilo ohm uh, trim pot I used a lower value resistor right there and uh, they didn't have a trim pot at all. Again you have to get about 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volts or wherever to uh, finally get uh, that transistor conducting and thus the LED on so whatever you're using as a signal, you have to keep that in mind that you need that voltage range. And uh, usually you can adjust that with uh, fixed resistors or uh, whatnot. And uh, if you're using something different from a trim pot. So in any case, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos that I'm posting in the screen. And uh, check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.